This weekend, China approved its latest five-year plan. The goal, tame inflation, cool growth to a sustainable level, and rebalance the economy. For reaction, we bring in Michael Pettis. He is a professor of finance at Peking University. He's also a senior associate in the Carnegie Asia program. Pettis also writes the highly influential blog entitled China Financial Markets, and he is with us now from Beijing. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. This is a huge plan. As an expert, what stuck out to you the most, either about the plan itself or the words chosen to talk about it? I think, I think there are two things that, that were really interesting. First off, the words chosen. This is the first time that growth hasn't been the number one priority. Bringing inflation down was the number one priority. And the number two priority was to bring consumption up which I think people are increasingly recognize, is, recognizing is going to be very, very difficult. The, the other thing that struck me about it is the amount of debate taking place. So it seems to me that there really isn't a consensus. There's a real fierce struggle over what to do next. And I think the only agreement is the short term they're going to bring inflation down. So, Michael, I want to get back to this idea of dissent and the difficulty of reaching consensus in a moment. But as you said, to raise consumption in China is very hard. I mean, there is no state savings plan, right? I mean, whatever you have for your retirement is what you yourself put in a bank. Yeah, and it's, it's worse than that, too, because the only thing that's really generating growth is this tremendous amount of investment. But much of the investment is not economically viable. And so the only way to make it viable is through these huge hidden transfers from the household sector, uh, particularly very, very low interest rates. So while we're pumping up investment, we're forcing the household sector basically to subsidize all of that. And then we also want consumption to, uh, to surge. And it's going to be very, very difficult to do that without so, bringing investment down. And it sounds like it's really going to be crunching the average person. As you say, the burden is essentially falling on households. I mean, Wen Jibao saying that reining in consumer and property prices is the nation's top priority. Was that a nod to the average person? I mean, is he trying to manage in advance potential unrest? Yes, I, I think there's, there's been for many, many years a fear that high levels of inflation can lead to, uh, to a great deal of social dissatisfaction. After all, we saw quite a bit of inflation in 85 to 87. We saw inflation again in 93 to 94. So there's a lot of concern about that. Um, and and, and it's, a real, it's a genuine problem, particularly for the poor, because inflation tends to be focused on those areas that the poor consume the most, most importantly being food. So that worsens the domestic imbalances at the same time as it makes everything else more difficult. Michael, picking up on that, I mean, one head of a family that Bloomberg locally spoke to said his rent has doubled over the year period, food bills have doubled as well, and this does seem like the average experience for many. Getting back to your initial point about the challenge of meeting consensus, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it that the Chinese government can agree on something like food subsidies, health care subsidies, or rent subsidies, something that will make the average person's life a little bit easier? Well, I, I think they're determined to bring inflation down, and I'm willing to bet that before the, uh, before the end of the second quarter, inflation will have come down. The problem is that there's a cost to subsidies, and the cost is paid for by the household sector indirectly. So the two top goals are, in a sense, sort of uh, mutually exclusive. If they bring inflation down through subsidies, it's going to be very hard later on to bring up consumption because we're reducing household income through those subsidies. Um, it's, it, there's no easy answer here. Everything that you do to solve one problem ends up making another problem worse, and that's part of the big confusion about policy. Michael, thanks so much for your time and for your insight. We appreciate it. Michael Pettis joining us there from Beijing.